I just built a Fortnite snowball launcher. But unlike Fortnite, that snowball is going 500 kilometers an hour. I think I just built the world's fastest snowball launcher. Hey Charles. Are you just trying to build a new every Christmas? First of all, Sean, it's not a it's a launcher. Secondly, I sure hope so. Are you just associating with Fortnite so you can get an excuse to build it? Like, you know, what you did with Halo? Perhaps. Huh, cool. I'm in. Come with me. I've got a plan. Fortnite launcher is nothing more than a glorified air cannon. A potato gun. And the best way to make a glorified potato gun is a sliding valve annular chamber pneumatic cannon. So we whipped one up out of some drain pipe. We've got a barrel, air chamber, fill valve, pilot valve, and main firing valve in here. When we open up the pilot valve, it's gonna dump the gas out from behind the main firing valve, kick the valve open, and fire this guy towards the pig. Let's see if it works. Whee! Three, two, one! Ah. Oh my god, that, was, that thing went flying! I've got a green one! <laughs> let's do it again, let's do it again! <laughs> Alright, so, I don't think we did much to the pig, that's... Yeah, it's still rock solid, but like... Never let it be said we miss. We've got the receipts. Okay, so now we just need to make that, but better. Simple as that. Just make it better. The Fortnite design is cool, but it's kind of unrealistic. Like, you put snow in the top, it winds up in the barrel somehow, and it's got a big cassette of CO2 tanks, so it was a revolver, but it's not even firing those. Here's what we came up with. We tried our best to make our design fit in the shape of the snowball launcher from the game. We probably could have made it fit perfectly, but we need a bit more performance than those Fortnite snowballs. Like in the game, we're going to be building a CO2-powered air cannon. Unlike in the game, our snowballs don't explode. So to be doing any damage, they need to be going really fast. And how do you make stuff go really fast from an air cannon? You have four options. A longer barrel, higher pressure, higher flow, and a faster valve. We can't really fit a longer barrel in this thing. But we can make the pressure really high. And we can build one hell of a valve. So that's exactly what we did. The heart of our launcher is this piston valve. It's a disc of plastic with a gasket on the front and a small hole. When it's pushed forward, the gasket prevents air from flowing into the barrel. And when it's pulled backwards, it allows air to flow freely into the barrel. The disc lives in this big aluminum tube, the chamber, which holds our compressed air before we fire. When we start to fill the chamber, the compressed air pushes the disc forward, sealing off the barrel. Once the barrel is sealed, the pressure on both sides can equalize through this little hole in the disc while still holding the disc forward, since there's more force on the back than on the front. As the pressure rises, the force holding the disc forward also rises. At full pressure, there's over a ton and a half holding the seal closed, pushing against the end of the barrel. We're going to make use of that to reload, but one thing at a time. To open the seal, we need to relieve that force. So we open a valve at the back of the chamber and let all of that air out extremely fast. This leaves more force pushing backwards than forwards, about four tons. The disc gets thrown backwards, opening the back of the barrel to the high pressure air in the front of the chamber. Once the air is in the barrel behind the snowball, the snowball gets accelerated very fast down to the far end. To get the air out of the back of the chamber, we need a fast, high flow valve. For the prototype, we use just a ball valve. But here, we need something high pressure, automated, and crazy fast. So I designed the perfect spool valve for the task. It lets us control large, high pressure flow with a small, lower pressure flow, which we can get from a small push button valve that will serve as our trigger. With those parts alone, we can launch our snowballs. Everything else serves to keep it holdable, usable, and looking like the Fortnite snowball launcher. Now that you're up to speed, let's go make it real. We got started by making the pilot valve. Sean turned the spool on the lathe, and I made the body on the manual mill. I had to drill and ream the main bore to exactly 7 eighths of an inch, then I added our ports and some mounting holes. We're back. Next, while Sean covered himself in plastic shavings, making the piston valve... Holy <laughs> Sean, Matt, uh... <laughs> I literally told him, yeah, they'll be in your hair, in your shirt, in your clothes, everywhere. Feeling my socks, dude. <laughs> I set up the chamber in the Tormach and programmed it to drill the 30 holes in each end that will hold the end caps, and with them, the immense pressure within the chamber. I whipped up the cylinder end caps on the mill. It looked exactly like drilling the holes in the cylinder wall. Now, I've got to put a hole in the middle of one. Pink, it's done. And now, the nozzle should just fit in there smoothly. 
So this all forms the front of the chamber that's going to hold our high pressure air before we fire. This part moves in and out of the chamber on the spring, and that's going to grab our shell, hold it in the barrel, and then when you fire, the spring's going to kick the whole thing backwards so that the shell falls out and you can put in a new one. I'm very excited about this thing. <laughs> as much as I'd love to make this whole thing out of metal, it's going to be a lot faster and easier to 3D print some of the parts. Luckily, we've got this brand new X1 Carbon from Bamboo Labs. It is our fastest 3D printer yet, and it's the first 3D printer we've ever got that worked right out of the box. Let's fire it up. As those printed, I went ahead and cut all our exterior panels on our fiber laser cutter. With those cut, I bent them into the shapes we needed and went up to the mezzanine. Perfect, totally square. We're up here in the mezzanine, we've got the front cowling loaded into our MOPA laser cutter. We've got our design loaded into the program, and now all we need to do is hit go, and it's going to etch colors into the side of this part. Let's go. Lasers, they're awesome. Sweet, it's done. It actually looks great. Finally, all that's left is painting some of the panels to kind of resemble the Fortnite launcher. With all the parts ready, I'm going to call Sean over and build this thing. Hey Charles, this is the last piece by the way. Oh sweet, thanks Sean. Good luck with everything. Um, not sure if anyone told you, but actually this is my last day of co-op. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. With Sean gone, it falls to me to assemble this whole piece. But first, it's time for a little break. Charles, why aren't you done yet? Uh, Hegan Aruthal. Hegan what? Yeah, this video is sponsored, Hegan Aruthal. It's a new real-time combat RPG developed by Billy Billy with fantastic 3D dynamic command operations. Just check out these characters. My personal favorite's Alude. I mean, it looks great, but don't you want to finish your project? Real life is just way too much effort. With the immersive 3D battle scenes and smooth combat mechanics featuring an array of epic weapons, there's just no point in building anything real. T tell me more. Hegan Aerithal takes the strategy RPG experience to a whole new level. You draw character cards, time skills, aim at positions, and exploit elemental weaknesses to control the battlefield. You dictate how you want the battle to go. There's limitless possibilities. There's a link in the description, isn't there? There sure is. And the best part is, I have a special gift just for you. Use my link to claim a free gift package in-game to kickstart your journey with powerful weapons. You heard the man. Download Hegan Arufla today and forge your path in the ultimate 3D strategy RPG. Can I have my phone back? No. Get back to work. We've got all of the parts made, and now we're just going to put it together. I'm going to start with the main valve and pressure chamber. Come on. Now we're going to be using these organic zinc plated blue dyed screws because I need one. They're awesome. All right. Now that we have the nozzle and the front bulkhead installed in the chamber, we're going to install the valve disc. Perfect fit. Next up, we're going to put on the rear chassis plate. This here is the giant spool valve that actually fires the main valve. I'm going to install the grip onto our frame. We're going to put the pressure relief valve into the chamber. Now we're going to install the chassis onto the chamber. That's important when you're dealing with high pressures like this to actually test things before committing to the full assembly. So we went back and did that before this assembly. It worked beautifully. Fire in the hole, I hope! Three, two, one! Holy sh! Yeah, baby! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes! So definitely it's gonna work, I hope. But let's see if this is actually looking how we envisioned it in the first place. We, uh, we may not have drawn this to scale, but I mean, this is actually gonna work. Now, this barrel, we can just bolt it in. Dude, this thing is badass. All right. You know, it's a hacksmith project when it's designed to be a two-handed weapon, but you cannot pick it up as one man. Next, we're gonna do some plumbing. So this big gauge is gonna monitor the pressure inside of the firing chamber on the launcher. It's gonna be a second gauge that's gonna show us how much pressure is coming out of the regulator that feeds the chamber. Got the valve, got the gauges. That was the easy part. Now we've gotta install the regulators. 
and that's all of the difficult part. Now let's get the rest of the launcher back in here. We just have to put the foregrip and bottom plate on. <laughs> oh boy, this thing's big. Oh, I cannot wait to see how this works. We need some snowballs to launch out of this thing. Like, stat, because I got an itchy trigger finger. <laughs> now, I know I said we were going to use snowballs, but frankly, they're just too weak. Instead, we're going to be using the stronger version of a snowball, ice. I cut out these slugs out of some aluminum tube, we're going to fill them up with water, put some dye in it, freeze them overnight, and then, well, you see where this is going. We're here, this thing looks awesome, I am terrified to test it, but also super excited. Let's get to it. Three, two, one. Whoa! We missed by a lot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't where I was aiming. It is where I hit. It took the corner out of this concrete block. I like the sound of that. This time, I'm gonna hit it in the head. We're gonna miss, let's miss with style. Fire in the hole! <laughs> Whoa, we hit it! That's what I'm yes! talking about. Who put this there? Minus! That was a hell of a shot, Charles. Nice job. It tastes like victory. So poor Frosty over there doesn't have a nose. It's time to ice Frosty the snowman. <laughs> I missed. But we got the hat, which is good. That was out of season. Hats on there, good. <laughs> Not just a warning shot this time, I hope. <laughs> yes! Woo! It's kind of a nose. There's a general orange smudge where a nose is supposed to be. I'm gonna call that a smashing success. Airing on the side of caution. Fire in the hole! Three, two, one! Oh! Oh, that's beautiful! What? Yo! That's awesome! Oh, that's so good! We didn't even touch the watermelon, we just broke all the glass! Let's see if we can punch through tempered glass with ice. I actually don't know how this one's gonna go. Three, two, one! Oh, yeah! yeah! Whoa, that really kicked back! Holy that was crap. nuts! <laughs> it must have completely shattered the projectile on the first yeah. pane. Just completely gone, pane breaks, splash, nothing left. Wow. I mean, come on, look at that. Wow. And there's, there's the blue ice. I'll give it a go. Yeah, Mike, you try shooting. Trajectory is a big thing, right? We're trying to make sure that we're compensating for the zero drop this thing has because it's going so fast. Firing in three, two, one. It. Your hands are numb after you fire it. Like you can't feel anything for like right. 10 seconds after you. <laughs> Two, one. <laughs> it came apart in the barrel. Oh boy. Wow, I mean, look at how much damage we almost did here. Like, so we're gonna try again at a lower pressure to try and do more damage. One. There it is. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's the shot we wanted. Oh, I think that went through more than one. Look at that. Two inch hole, two inch hole. But look at the exit wound on this side. I can fit my whole hand through that. Charles, there is 500 PSI. I'm gonna go hang out behind that blast Sounds shield. I wish you the best man. of luck, man. All right, here we are. Full tilt, ice versus door. From the hip, God, I hope I hit this thing. Oh, yeah! You've got to be kidding. Oh, that felt awesome. Perfect haul. Right through the door. Nailed it. Holy. That was past the mustard <laughs> and right into the ketchup. Oh, my God. Ah, this is the coolest thing I've ever built. We're going to get up to the danger pressure here. We're on the highway to the danger zone. I'm gonna ear up here. That's probably a good idea, Mike. 
<laughs> Three, two, one! Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, boys! It came oh, apart in the barrel, eh? Look at look at the spray. Yeah, but it hardly mattered. No, it did not matter at all. Oh man! All the parts that hit broke off and just pulverized wherever they hit. There's snow and ice and glass under the screen in there. All right, we got some paint down range. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, okay. That works. She's still hissing. I think I know where we hit it. Yeah, I think so too. Well, since I'm about to ruin this hoodie, it's a good thing that I can pick up a new one. Maximus.store. Loading her up. Let's hope we hit it. If you miss from here, we're going to have to have a little chat. <laughs> there it is! Woo! Yeah. And I guess I can't be too surprised that no paint came back this way. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck at uh, I'm oh, not yellow right now. That was a hit! Uh, I had a very interesting childhood. <laughs> <laughs> 200 PSI in the chamber. Three, two, one! No! <laughs> Nice shot, bud. Nice shot. Thank you. That is what I'm talking about. That was on point. Look at that. We see some marshmallows, baby. Woo! Nice. That's nice. Thank you for watching. This was the Fortnite Snowball Launcher. Thank you to fans and members for all your support. This was the most fun thing I've built, and that feels really nice right now. It's kind of cold out. Woo! Yeah. Hit it, Logie! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Logan, get more behind you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> sick. What a test. You can help us keep making these awesome projects by visiting Hacksmith.store. It's not your usual YouTuber store, because we're not your typical YouTuber. We're makers. We've been researching and developing these products for years now, and these are the products we truly believe in and use every day. It's all part of my master plan. For example, check out this water-resistant stone paper notebook and tool pen combo we have. It includes a stylus, ruler, bubble level, and interchangeable screwdriver tips. And if I was to travel back in time and only bring one thing with me, I would bring the Pocket Ref book, because it's jam-packed with the most useful information you could use to rebuild civilization. If the internet goes out, you'll be unstoppable. I call it the engineer's bible. We also just released the handyman version focused more towards DIY and home repairs. This is our retractabit screwdriver, which lets you effortlessly switch between six of the most common bits with just one hand. We have the full size and precision drivers available, and we're coming out with a hex bit version soon, made right here in Canada. This handheld torch is perfect for all your pyromaniac needs, and with our patent pending flame color changer, you'll feel like all of your favorite Star Wars characters any day. Get one now at hacksmith.store and help us keep funding these amazing projects.